Hello, today I'm speaking to Tom Lumley and the Brave Liaison. We have Tom, Jake, Billy and Johnny. How are you all today? Pretty good. Good. Great. Love and light. So you started off last year being named by Hugh Stevens as Ones to Watch in 2020. You released your debut EP, you had four singles played on Radio 1, and now we have your first single of 2021 due out next Friday called Crawling. It's already had a fair bit of radio play pre-release. Do you want to tell everyone a bit about this song? Yeah, um, it's a track that we've been sitting on for a while. We've been playing it live for quite a while. Um, it's just one that seems to go down really well when we play it live. Lots of people like it. So it seems like the right time to record it properly and, and release it now um, and try and keep the momentum going that we've kind of managed to keep over the uh, the lockdowns. Um, it's a track about kind of that toxic, typical toxic relationship where one person's treating the other one probably not the best way and, and the other person can't stop themselves from going back. So how did you write it? Did you write it all together or how did it come together? Go on, I, think, I was thinking about this earlier. I think this is the first song we actually wrote together, wasn't it, Tom? Yeah, by accident. <laughs> yeah, because before that, it was like you were bringing songs to the studio to demo so you had done most of the writing up to that point and then we were recording another song i think it was sky high and i just yeah. started playing a chord progression <laughs> hey sky high is a banger don't don't talk down about it <laughs> sky, sky, sky high is long gone vintage yeah, but every now and again every now and again we still bust it out live yeah no we were just sat there and um we were recording sky high and jake just started playing some chords and i was like that's good and just hummed the melody and then we just literally had the lyrics and within sort of 10 minutes 15 minutes we actually had the song that it's never happened again since but <laughs> it felt it felt special at the time <laughs> yeah it all came together in in a nice natural way sounds cool yeah definitely <laughs> how did you manage to record it in between lockdowns and things was it difficult um it's with like recording studios with Jake Studio um, in this lockdown, because we recorded it over the last lockdown um, since January, the studios are allowed to have like one or two members in at a time as long as everyone's socially distanced. Mm -hmm. So it's not been the same recording experience where we'd all see each other, but we've all been going in at separate points to get the bits down that we've needed to. So still been in the studio, which is nice, but slightly different in the way we haven't seen each. Like I've not seen Johnny or Billy in ages, but I've seen Jake a fair bit. <laughs> yeah, and we haven't been able to hug or anything. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> but strangely, on the flip side, when it comes to actually shooting the video, lockdown kind of done us a favour because we, we shot most of the video in a hotel that if lockdown wasn't happening, would have been open to the public and probably would have been fully booked up. So it also done us a huge favour. Yeah, and I've seen a sneaky preview of the music video it's very different from the last one, which was more angry and apocalyptic. Did you, as a band, come up with the video ideas, or who normally thinks of them? Go on, Johnny. Well, it's got to be down to Sam, uh, our videographer, Sam Lance. He's uh, absolutely outstanding in everything he does, to be fair. Um, but he's uh, he'd come on us with, uh, with us with the last couple of tours. Um, but he kind of comes up with all the ideas, puts them in place, makes sure we're all doing what we're meant to be doing at all times. Um, and realistically, I don't think we really get much of a say in it, do we, guys, nowadays? It's kind of, really, it's kind of more down to Sam, really. Well, we I could have say, but we, we don't really need to, because ever, no, exactly, yeah. ever since so Casual, he does. yeah, he smashed the video for Casual out the park. So we just trust him now. It's like, he listens to the song, he gets the vibe of the song, he knows what the lyrics are about, and he just comes up with a video idea. On, it's, it's, based on that yeah like jake was saying for example we're already planning for something in the future another video and it, like he had the same ideas already that jake had for the video so he just seems to be on the same wavelength as us and everything works really well yeah, yeah. we're really lucky with sam sam's a great guy so it's april fools tomorrow out of all of you who is most likely to prank everyone well, it's my mum's. It's my mum's birthday, so there's going to be some empty boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Having a birthday on April Fools must be 
quite scary sometimes. Yeah, she always gets um, something each year. I, I was gonna say, summer. I was gonna say, is her birthday always on April Fools? But it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surpri- surprisingly, mate, her birthday's the same day every year. Yeah, always <laughs> on April first. So is April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> Who tells uh, the bad jokes? Oh, Johnny. Johnny. Johnny is like the dad jokes, man. Like all day long coming at like, I think the, probably the most annoying thing that Johnny does is always try to sneak song titles into normal conversation and then just shoot us all a look like he's really proud of himself. <laughs> but Bill, you just got to <laughs> let it go, mate. You just got to let it oh, go. Oh, stop it. It's called let go. Let it go. <laughs> this isn't Frozen. Come yeah, on, Johnny, we can do better than this. Johnny oh, definitely no. the dad of the band. I want to that was poor from you, Jake. I want to see if we can get some song titles in your answers to some of the questions later on in the interview. See if we can get any in. Yeah, all right. We, we, can, we can make this work. <laughs> we can do this. We've got the professional. <laughs> Have you got any funny stories from when you've been at gigs or on tour of things that have happened to you? Oh, um, straight away, tick the two last boxes. Tour, tour yeah. one with Tom Lumley and the Brave Liaison. Uh, well, before the Brave Liaison was actually a thing and it was just Tom Lumley. Mm-hmm. Johnny at the time was, was, was with a girlfriend and we were playing a gig in Sheffield and they'd had a bit of a tiff that night and he was all in a bad mood. So I took him for a few beers and uh, <laughs> he just, <laughs> he ended up crawling. There's your, there's your band title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up crawling along the pavement uh, and but when we did get back into our hotel room for the night he found his way i think it was more of a hostel that night actually yeah i was gonna say you're trying to make it sound really glamorous mate it was a really it was, awesome. yeah. so sketchy it, it was so <laughs> bad johnny found his way to the communal toilet and managed to fall asleep in there for the entire night <laughs> <laughs> i think oh, no. i was thinking about this earlier we were just i think we was really lucky that Tom was the one that found him there because anyone else, it would have been super embarrassing. Well, <laughs> I, I was the one that managed to get the door open eventually and find him in there. But God knows how many people were trying to open that door before me. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a bit of Bless a sight, just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Sheffield for you, man. You can't sell beer for two pounds and expect Southerners not to end up like that. Yeah. Yeah, you say that, uh, Bill. Just... I'm pretty sure we played a gig in London, didn't we? And then you stayed at that bar afterwards with your mate I'm Ash. And this is where you got the name Bill Spew because you were doing shots or whatever and you vomited straight over the bar. I'm the Chunder <laughs> champion. Mate. I don't even Chunder champion. <laughs> and and me, me and Jake are just sensible. We, we're just sensible people. So. No, no, Jake's, Jake's, Jake can't oh, digest got anything some videos and of you're you. vanilla. I don't want to... We're not discussing any videos of me, Johnny. Okay. <laughs> Go on. Whilst we're on stories, what is the best experience you've had together as a band? I know what doing I was going to say. D- doing a live session at Made of Vale Studios, the BBC introducing. Literally, probably the best day of my life. Yeah. So I'm good, not, man. Like, I good. hate getting up early. We all stayed at Tom's the night before. And I despise getting up early. So Tom was like, he, and Tom, Tom knows I'm bad at getting up early. And if I wake up early, I'm in a bad mood. So Tom was really not looking forward to the journey there. But we woke up at like six. And because we were going to Maida Vale, I was absolutely oh. buzzing. It was like Christmas. It was the best day ever. <laughs> my family, we were staying at my mum and dad's house. And like, they were asleep. And Jake's like ran, running around the house buzzing. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, just calm down, mate. <laughs> it was a very different Jake. Um, for me, I'd, I'd say Made of Vale is well up there. Um, but for for me, probably selling the first... We sold out J2 in Cambridge, which was amazing. But I think the first time we did Portland Arms and sold that out felt really special. Because um, it's kind of a venue that as a band coming up, like in, from Cambridge, you you go to see acts there, you support your first bands there and stuff like that. And you, the goal is always to sell that out. So that, that for me, alongside playing Isle of Wight Festival... Mm, yeah. I can't pick between those three. I can't pick both. Both of those were great days. Like for, from a guy, the only guy in the band that doesn't kind of live around near where Tom lives, the Portland Arms kind of quickly became a place that I fell in love with as well. The scene just thrives there. Like for, as a guy from kind of closer to London, there's so much more community within the bands from Cambridgeshire. It seems 
like in comparison to London anyway. And it was just, it was amazing. And to meet like loads of the guys that had been a part of Tom's journey and now the band's journey to actually sell that place out was, that was a super good day. And yeah, Isle of Wight obviously is Isle of Wight and that's just brilliant. So. Yeah. I remember the ferry over on Isle of Wight and just thinking, I don't know, it just didn't seem real that we were going to go and play a festival that I dreamed about playing. Yeah, wow. here, in, here in Biffy Claro, soundcheck, the, when we woke up in the tent, listening to them soundcheck, I was like, this is mad. Yeah, that was really cool, wasn't it? That was actually Yeah, really cool. that really just, that's the moment that didn't feel real of that weekend for me. I'm like, we're actually playing a festival and Biffy Claro is soundchecking right now. <laughs> yeah. It was sick. That, that sounds cool. What about you, Johnny? Same sort of days that were your best experience? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Jake and uh, Tom got a great opportunity. They played a show with The Hunter in uh, The Junction in Cambridge. They got a really good opportunity then. I mean, if I could call that my best show, I would do. But uh, <laughs> apart from that, I think Isle of, White, Isle of White's got to be up there. But even J2, J2 was probably the best show. All of us four lads backstage. It felt real. It felt nice. Yeah. And actually, I think we got yeah. a really good crowd in there that night, to be fair. Yeah, that, that was, that was big. Like, I didn't. I didn't think we'd sell that out. So it was 350, I think it was. And that was cool. That was really good. Massively. So what song is guaranteed to get you on the dance floor? Uh, there's a song called Walking on Sunshine. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Can this not be in, in every interview? Can this not be in every single one? Uh, I don't know if you've ever met Johnny before, but he knows the guy that wrote it. Um, and he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't often tell people. So I'm just bigging him up for him now. So, um, so Tom is going back from about three years ago when he first met me. And it must have been like the first few comments I made when I was 18 years old. <laughs> and now yeah. I'm 22 and I think I've grown up a little bit more and haven't spoken about it since then. But he still no, likes he to hasn't. drop it in there every now and then. Yeah, he hasn't, but it just comes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> song, yeah, songs that get you on the dance floor. I'm going to go straight out there with um, A Guilty Pleasure, which is TikTok by Kesha. Oh, banger. Absolute banger. Oh, We've well, actually, this before. Yeah, even better, Timber by Kesha and Pitbull, I think it is. No, just Kesha, basically. <laughs> Anyone else got a... For, for oh, me, it's got to be like... I mean, ABBA would definitely work. If there was a I bit of ABBA, ABBA busted out, that would get me going. So it's yeah. ABBA or Avicii. There's that song uh, where he does the Days of the Week, that Avicii song, what's that called? Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, that would definitely get me on the dance floor as well. Oh, it's going to bug me now what that song's called. Just a bit of Venga Boys for me. Love it. <laughs> All over. <laughs> he loves cheese. So Venga cheese. Boys, get me on the boom, boom, boom. I don't know. Brilliant. Maybe it's a bit a bit classic white boy or something, but uh, a bit of Mr. Brightside for me all day long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah love it. Mm, a bit overplayed, but yeah, a good song. Nonetheless. Got to love Mr. Brightside. <laughs> Yeah. What artist or band would you like to see cover one of your songs and why? Hmm. I would love to see uh, Billie Eilish cover one of our songs because she's one of the biggest artists in the world and it would probably help us with recognition. Just greedy reasons, basically. <laughs> I'd, I'd love hmm. Paramore to cover one of our songs. If Paramore oh, covered one of our songs... I'd be, I'd be all over that. Yeah, that, that that'd would be, be amazing. Cool. I think it'd be good to see Puddle of Mud cover one of our songs, because I don't know if you've seen the Nirvana one, but it's awful. <laughs> it <would just> be <laughs> funny. Oh my God, yes. I forgot about those guys. <laughs> yeah, that, oh. I watched that the other day, and it was just, it was dreadful. And it would be good, you know, to make us realise how, how lucky we are to have Tom singing. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought we I'd hear you say we, Yeah, we don't often say that, do we? I never thought exactly. I'd hear you say that. <laughs> it was a toss up between that and nothing but themes to see what we actually could be if oh. Tom could sing better. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I, I, w I would kill to have Connor's voice from Nothing But Thieves, but we're, yeah. I'm not him. <sighs> oh well. What about you, Johnny? Johnny? It's got to be Katrina and the Ways. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't actually honestly know. There's so many you could pick from, so many great acts out there. But I suppose you almost aspire too much of what who you'd like to play it, but it could actually become a reality yeah, one day if you actually got that far. So yeah. never shoot that down because Tom always tells us to keep high spirits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now Johnny's a dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, there's not just one dreamer in the band anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you won the lottery? Buy a boat. Wow. I'm buying a boat. Oh, I'm yeah, fired, yeah. but I'm still getting a boat. What would you call I'd, I'd definitely. What would I call the boat? Oh, this be... answer is so different to what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> What I like boats, man. Boats are cool. <laughs> I'm going boating. I'm taking it to Thailand or somewhere. I'm going scuba diving off of it. Oh man, I just want a boat. Can't we have a band just... boat? Like if one of us, yeah. one of us, like wins the lottery, like... that person buy the boat, and then we just go on a band holiday. Yeah, yeah we, we could, could do a tour. tour the boat. We could do a but... tour where we just play coastal cities on the boat. Well, not on the yeah, boat. We come off like the boat. Top to the deck gigs. of the boat. We have like a massive rig. Oh. And we just pull up somewhere and we run oh, so from the top of this boat. So we're not playing venues, we're just playing outdoor shows from the boat. Yeah, I was meaning get the off and play venues, on. but... All right, <laughs> you're on. My you answer... the label to fork out for this? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> My answer is very different. If I won the lottery, well, I'd put some money aside for, like, family. I'd put some money aside for, like property i'd probably oh, pay off my mortgage given. come on that bit's boring obvious. but then the first thing that i do uh, other than the boring stuff is like <clears throat> literally pay for us to be advertised everywhere and buy on to big tours and all that sort of stuff you can do so not necessarily for us to become famous and to s- sustain it but just to have the experiences of playing like big stages and t- supporting a big band i think mm-hmm. that'd be awesome yeah i'm buying a ferrari Let's just, I mean, you, 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 you've won the lottery, right? So you could just like hire out a venue for a night, put us on and just pay people to come there so that we sold it out. You just just awesome, got to play right? as many. <laughs> we just have to play as many dream cities as we could. That's, that's it. Oh, here we go. That's a, another band song that to- Johnny snuck in there. there Billy, go, you, you also, we wouldn't need to pay people to come, Billy. All you do is you just book like a big outdoor field with the Food Fighters headline and put us as main support. Okay, yeah, cool, that works. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, £500,000 later. Yeah. (laughs) He's won the lottery, mate. He's got loads of... He's won the lottery. Who cares? (laughs) You've got £168 I'd do it once. Exactly. (laughs) He's he's, he's won the Euro millions, not just like the little £500 fundable, no. (laughs) No. Not the 5k a week one or 5k a month, whatever it is. Oh, I love that. Made for life. What is it? Set, set for life? Something like that? Ten, yeah. You get 10, 10 grand a month. month for 30 years. Oh, that's brilliant. It's like drip feeding you lottery winning. So you can't just be irresponsible and blow it all on a boat or something. <laughs> 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 well, you could because you could buy the boat on finance. Johnny can talk you through oh, it. Yes. Oh, here we go. <laughs> finance got over here. They, uh, <laughs> they all take the mick out of me. Basically, I've got so many things on finance. But my credit rating is like up here. And theirs is like right down low. My credit rate. My credit rate is high. high. Two nil. Thing to have stuff on finance, hundred percent. Oh, my my credit rating is non-existent. I can't even get credit. (laughs) (laughs) Do they not do that in Little (laughs) Catwell? Who is most likely to go on a reality TV show? Johnny. Jake. I, don't know. Jake. I don't know, Billy. Uh, do you, do you, Jake, you did see Billy's hoodie the other day, the jacket, sorry, with the oh, yeah, hair. proper towy boy, yeah. And he's from Essex think... anyway, so it. yeah, he could exactly. definitely be on towy, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I've got to be oh, yeah. honest though, if someone part offered me a part load of me of would want to do like I wouldn't want to do like towy or anything like that, but I would be interested if someone came knocking and asked if I wanted to do um, I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here I just love I that show I say that yeah I think that's awesome even though I kind of hate spiders and I'm not a huge fan of camping I could, <laughs> yeah, I, I could or, see Jake on weird stuff yeah who could be a fan of eating like goat testicles and stuff that's just weird <laughs> I could see Jake on Love Island definitely 100% yeah. if, I, if I can get ripped enough I'll do it <laughs> that's be the done, first but... step 
they, they, they are all ripped on those, those sort of shows like X on the Beach or whatever. Not all, they, they, always not one, they, they always have that one abnormal guy because they have to yeah. make it up. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> yeah, and probably... You, you could you be the weirdo of the group. Yeah, Grace, like, you're going to have to cut that out of the interview. Not, you're going to have to cut that out. He doesn't pull and he just gets sent home, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know oh, wow. would that be. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> for me... For me, I just want to go on panel shows like A League of Their Own. Oh, yes. Would I like yes. it? Yes, that would be so love good. love to do that. That would be that, awesome. That would, that would be fun. Who is most likely to mess up during a gig or recording? But ding! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say it. Um, but... <laughs> to be fair, I, I actually think it's changed a lot since when we first started playing together. Because when back when I was eighteen, yeah. it was always me. But I think it's kind of fairly even now. I, w- yeah. I wouldn't have said there's there's that much difference in it now. I'd, I'd also think kudos to everyone as a band. I don't think we make that many mistakes. I think we kind of yeah through a set. Okay. Maybe when, maybe when we're set, in we'll the do one or two each. Yeah, when we're whenever in I flow, see gigging regularly. Like we we get tighter and tighter as well. So when it around like festival season or tour season, we get so strong as a unit that we don't fluff up anywhere near as much. I think our first gig that we done sort of last year, there was a couple of couple of mistakes which I think we could forgive having not played together for six months or whatever it was at the time. But yeah. generally now we're okay. But if if anyone's going to mess up, it's probably Johnny. <laughs> oh, also, like when I've whenever you, you hear someone mess up, you turn around. It's because Jake's like trying to do backflips off of a speaker or something. It's <laughs> we're, it's always I feel like we mess up when we're really going for it and like trying to give a show and energy. And so I think you can account for those errors. That's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was when I was crowd surfing and that the crowd were literally throwing yeah. me in the air, it was l- literally impossible to throw to play guitar. I couldn't do it because my guitar was like bouncing all over the shop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think you need to just stop whining about it and just get on with it personally. <laughs> You'll see what it's like, Bill, when you're light enough to crowd surf. He's gone in. Oh, no. He's done me. He's done me. He's done me. I, I to, Sorry. I to no, no, I have to defend Bill here. I, I saw Bill the other week, briefly, from a socially distanced point of view, and he's looking quite slim and slender. Thank you. I've got his back up here. The boy's been dieting. As of uh, well, we've all been trying to do our own thing because we're all at different ends of the spectrum. Me and Tom are like, I suppose, we're the guys that need to diet to not be really overweight. So Very chubbier too. Jake's the polar opposite, and no matter what he eats, he doesn't put any weight on. And Johnny Johnny's will just... eat McDonald's at least seven days a week <laughs> and get away with it somehow. Yeah. Johnny is the worst, to... and he's yeah, he's in the best shape of the band. Like he looks yeah, better man. than all of us, but he yeah. eats Johnny's the ribs. worst diet going. Oh, it does my head Sorry. in. How he gets away I, with I it. had a twenty-four inch pizza for lunch today. Oh man, twenty-four. That's twenty-four it's inch. Barely fit through the doorway. Yeah, well nice. I can't even fit two foot on the screen. I've got to go back. That bit. Well, and you, you managed to eat all of that. I got three quarters of the way through, and the other lad finished the rest off. Going, so three man. lads had one quarter and Johnny had three. No, yeah, exactly. I had three, you had an eighteen-inch pizza. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which isn't that impressive, you know? Eighteen inch, not that impressive. Who is most likely to marry a stranger in Vegas? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting pretty desperate at this point, so I might. <laughs> I think uh, well, I've got a reason. <laughs> uh, I've got a reason why I'd go for Jake. And the only reason is, is because Jake doesn't drink. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if we went to Vegas, he'd get excited. He'd have two drinks, three drinks. And by that point, God knows what he's going to do. And Yeah, it does sound quite jakey. Yeah, it would be the hangover. I'd meet a, like a hot blonde <laughs> stripper. I'd marry her right there and then. <laughs> you know what? I don't even, even think you need even 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 a drink. drink. Even yeah. without a drink. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what the actress is called from the hangover, but I would marry her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To be fair, I would as well. Agreed with that. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. I'm sure your fiance will be chuffed to know that. 
<laughs> Who is most likely to scream on a roller coaster? I love roller coasters. It's got, it's got to be Jake and Jen, isn't it? That as well, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I hate roller heights. coasters. Oh, there you go. I'd probably I'd probably cry before I screamed, but uh, I'd cry and scream together. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> as long as you don't cry, scream, and throw up uh, all Ooh, at the same yeah, time, that's nice. really bad. Yeah, that that wouldn't be fun. Yeah, <laughs> but as long as they were behind me, no, yeah, if, they, if they if they get covered in sick. Cheers, mate. Well, I would usually ask what's next for 2021, but I know you have multiple live shows arranged from Liverpool to Cardiff to Cambridge, which I have tickets for. And we have the hey. new, single, new single next week, Falling, and everyone watching, you should go pre-save it. Is there anything else that we should be looking out for from you for the rest of this year? Well, you've got some big stuff on the way. Big, uh, probably like our biggest announcement announcements to date. Um, but we unfortunately can't tell you anything that's not been already <laughs> announced. So I'm going to be that tease and tell you that there's massive stuff coming. Well, I personally, I think the boys will agree it's probably our biggest announcement. Um, well, I'm buzzing for it. I'm so buzzing. <laughs> yeah. But we can't tell you, I'm afraid. I'm very sorry. Well, I will be looking forward to finding out more. And thank you very much, all of you, for coming on to talk to me today. And thank you for everyone watching. Again, reminder to go pre-save calling. And yeah, I will speak to you all soon. Goodbye. Thanks, Thanks so much. much. Cheers. Thanks, Grace. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Grace.